Hi, we're here today to talk about the hyoid apparatus. This is very true and dear to our heart because we find out that this is an issue that is in many, many horses. And we discovered, oh, close to about seven to eight, ten years ago, that uh, the how to actually put the hyoid back into place without having to do manual manipulation by using light only. It was an exciting ex discovery because it made a huge, profound change in what uh, we do with the horses. So what I'd like to do is talk today about what is it and what we're talking about. Welcome to the section that we're going to talk now about the hyoid and the hyoid bones themselves. In front of me I have a series of five bones. This is what makes up the hyoid bones on an adult horse. This is an assembled hyoid which is on a young horse which fits the skeleton. And notice that as this sits up and I'll show you how this sits in the medibular ramus itself, that as I move this slightly from one side, watch the bottom where the tongue is, how that moves back and forth, or if it's moved this way, one way or the other. It doesn't take much movement on top to make a lot of movement on the bottom. Next I want you to notice this, this bone right here, the top bone is called the stylohyoid bone. On the adult, notice the size and thickness compared to my finger. These are very thin bones and easily broken. So whenever we're handling the tongue, it's very important that we think about this, that if the tongue is pulled, pulled to one side or twisted, there's a chance, and where it typically will break is either here or where it connects at the bottom bone. Once that happens, it's very, very hard, almost impossible with surgery to fix. So you'll have horses that will sit with their tongue hanging out one side or constantly holding their head or shaking their head or always holding it to one side when you're running to try and center that and dropping a lot of grain, other things. So it's important that we note that these are very small, fragile bones and easily broken. Let's now take a look at how the hyoid sits inside the horse's skeleton itself. I'm going to take the top, top part off. So this is the mandibular ramus and its teeth. And this is where the hyoid would sit up in here in the TMJ area. If I put these inside where the hyoid would actually sit, you can see how that centers itself in between. But now the minute I have something happen and I've got a muscle pulling or tendon pulling, you can see how that can make a change. And I'll do this from both directions in what's happening here or possibly here. So then what the horse has to do is to turn its head to try and recenter itself. So we'll turn this around so you can see it from the other side. So we'll bring it from this way. I'll try to make sure my hands are out of the way. So as it's sitting in here, you can see it's centered in the, in, in the jaw right now, but now I'm gonna be something going wrong. So the horse now has to take his jaw, turn itself and try to match it up. So now it's always holding its head to its right. All right, this causes them to have issues all the way down its neck to the front shoulder. So then the front shoulders and all the way to its back. So the front shoulders may not be able to get a right lead, may not be able to get the ribs off to one side, possibly having back issues in the opposite hind croup to all kinds of things happening just coming from the highway. We have found this is one of the most major areas to work on to get the most improvement in the horse. So some of what we talked about was being very careful about this being a fragile piece of apparatus is that we have found through many modalities that the best modality that seems to work the best is to red light these areas. It releases the hyoid back and it will stay in place from anywhere from three days to forever depending on which horse you're working with. Some may need multiple um, sessions, sometimes just one time does the trick. Um, another thing to think about is dental work. Having a balanced hyoid before you do dental work versus having an unbalanced hyoid to start with can make a huge difference 
on how well the horse is going to do because once you've done the dental work to an unbalanced hyoid, now you've got a mess. So that's what we're having to deal with. We'll go. When it's out of balance, there's two main muscles that it does affect. The omohyoid and the brachiocephalic muscle, which comes out from underneath, comes down here, and attaches over the front shoulder. When that is sore, that will cause them not to get a good lead on one side, will cause them to hold their head off the side, they won't take a bit correctly, and they won't collect. So even though you're thinking, i got to make a different bit, everything else is going on, you might find out that the hyoid is what's out of place. And we have discovered, and also with Dr. Kerry Ridgway, where I learned this from, is that 70% uh, of the horses may have their hyoid out of place. So before you go thinking about, I need a different bit, I need a different this, 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 and this, you might want to consider taking a look. No. Simple checks for you to see if the hyoid is out. It's just find right below the ear, there's a notch right here. This is called the TMJ. If you just come continue forward from the ear down on the bottom side of what this is called the zygomatic arch and just put a finger on each side and push and if a horse throw, kind of tosses their head up that usually means something's wrong and if they go to the right or left usually tells you which side of the horse that it is out. Uh, I know it's a fly. It's okay. Good. Thanks sweetie. We all love it. And then other places to come right below the eye where you feel the top part of the teeth and push here. And if they react, a lot of times that nerve that runs down here is, can be reactive as well. All right, then I'm gonna move to the side so you can see. We did this in our assessment when we took and pulled, put our hands in a groove, thumb on top, come down, go in between this is point stomach 10, and if we wiggle back and forth and she gets a reaction on either side, you can, that tells you also that there's something going on with the hyoid. So those are the things you're looking for. Work. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna go into, next step we would use is we're going to release the hyoid itself. Now, this is being careful a little bit because when you're doing the hyoid work, you are getting into very, very sensitive areas. I always start underneath the zygomatic arch or the TMJ area. If they get very reactive, that move down to maybe below the jaw or the mandibular ramus or down to uh, stomach 10 point, which is also the brachiocephalic itself. So, so whichever side the hyoid was out, in this case, her seems to be off to the right side. That's where you're gonna take and put your Pro light on high and put your standard light on low. Now again, if you don't have two lights, you're just gonna put your hand on the opposite side. So I always put the low light on first and then put the standard light or high light on the other side second. Put your hands against the horse and look in the same direction that she looks. Now we're gonna physically do this. This horse has not been done in a while. So we're gonna see a lot of times they may either go still like she's doing right now and blink a lot, or they may get real reactive. So in this case, she's going still, which I like this. Then typically in about 30 seconds, she'll start moving around her body or head. And now all I'm gonna do is just follow her. This takes anywhere from 45 seconds to three minutes. So hang in there. Now my lights are gonna sit out at 90 degrees from her and without pushing in, I'm just holding. So there's already a movement they may start to, and what i'm looking for when i get all done is that they will typically maybe toss or throw their head up to the one side a little bit and then come down and then start to lick and chew if we get that then we know it's pretty much has gone back into place but we just kind of hang out here now and wait to see what happens things you can be looking for on the horse prior to this again is like eye alignment they may back up on you. Oh, wow, we're getting lick and chew already. And, and good, we're getting close. We're getting close. 
and we're going to have one more, and then she's going to be good. And once she gets done, and just go with it. Move your head with them. And that will keep you very safe. And now I'm waiting for those ears to come forward. And once those ears come forward, she's going to be ready to go. We're almost there. And this is where I think some people let go too early. Although, don't make it dangerous. And don't make it too uncomfortable for them. Okay, she is done. So we're going to give her a second now to balance with that. And I usually give about 30 seconds to let her react and find out what's going on with her mouth. And she really doesn't want me touching her head. That's a great reaction that you'd have right there. Good girl. And they'll tell you. Now when she finally comes back down to her, she gets like, okay, I'm all done. And she's going to look at other things. Then I can move. Now I'm going to place the lights next in line with the eye on inside of each of the jaws. The powerful light still on the right side, standard light on the left side. And this is going to release the area of where the <coughs> hyoid bone centers the tongue underneath. And you'll see that they'll start getting a little bit curious and moving around when the things are all getting back to where they're supposed to be. So we do this for about 30 seconds. And we're looking again that she might take and open her mouth and move her jaw back and forth just to test where her hyoid is. Now, keep in mind, some horses, if this is the first time, their hyoid could have been out for the last 17, 20 years. So this might be quite traumatic. So always pay attention to how, um, how their pull is, how they are as far as reactive. And that tells me she's done because she pulled away. So we're going to wait for her now for a second. We don't have to wait too long on this part. Just give her a second to rub something. Now I'm going to put my hands in the groove, my thumb on top, come down to the thigh groove, put my finger in between. That's where the place is for stomach 10. And we're going to put this on each side. Make sure you're touching the horse. This is going to release the brachial cephalic now down over the front shoulder so we eliminate the shoulder pain. We have found that so many horses have their hyoids out, and this is so profound. Even if you just did this one thing, you can, make, you can rock your horse's world. And then they'll start taking a bit correctly, they'll, they'll start getting a better collection, they'll not hold a bit off to one side, they may be able to get a better lead one way or the other, but this is huge. It's not about a bigger bit, it's about taking care of their problem. And she's looking pretty good. See how still she's gotten? This is what we're looking for. And she's now looking out to do other things. So we're probably pretty good. I would typically leave them on that front part a good 30 to 45 seconds. We'll come back and do a recheck to make sure there's no pain there, which it's pretty good. So that's how you do the hyoid section.